Welcome to Networking Rx, a podcast devoted to helping business professionals like you enhance your networking skills in order to become more proficient giving and receiving quality business referrals and improving the overall quality of your life and the lives of those around you. The Networking Rx podcast is a production of AmSpirit Business Connections, an organization whose mission is to empower business success through networking. Welcome to the Networking Rx podcast. I'm your host, Frank Egan, founder and president of AmSpirit Business Connections. Welcome to the program. Thanks for subscribing. Today, we're going to talk about great apes and grapes. Well, not really, but... uh, Anyhow, I ran across a study. It was called An- Animal Cognition, Great Apes Wait for Grapes. And in this study, what they talk about is, actually, it's an article that kind of recaps the study. It's not the study itself. Um, it's in the, uh, it's in uh, the uh, volume 17, number 21 of the magazine or newsletter, Current Biology. But... We, we all understand patience, right? We save for retirement. Um, humans have been known to save since uh, since the Ice Age. Um, maybe maybe sooner. Um, you start looking at the archae- archaeological record. Uh, humans saved. They, you know, prepare meats. Um, obviously, when, during the Ice Age, it's, food isn't always abundant. So you gather food and you just don't gather and eat. You gather and you try and save it you keep it and save it for times of uh, uh, times of scarcity um, so what they wanted to do is they wanted to and this all relates back to networking and relationships if you will um, just in case you're wondering <clears throat> what they wanted to do is they wanted to sort of look at other animals and see what kind of patients they have um, and so they conducted a, a number of different experience experiments on a number of different uh, animals and the types of things they were trying to do is they were trying to see if one they could get animals to understand the whole notion of waiting uh, if you can get x now but if you're willing to wait you get x plus one or two or whatever it might be x times two uh, whatever it might be and see how long they were willing <clears throat> willing to wait um and so they did this with a number of different animals and, uh, for example, pigeons. And, you know, most animals, well, I shouldn't say most animals. Some an- animals are intelligent enough that you can get them to understand that you can have X now or if you're willing to wait, you get X plus. Uh, for example, pigeons, they got them to understand that you can have so much feed now, but if you're willing to wait you get more feed um, and pigeons aren't very patient they're with, they'll take the now rather than waiting four seconds and getting a lot more now uh, or a lot more to eat um, and rats are are better but still not great you know they would prefer to take what they can get now and not wait um, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush, kind of, a, kind of a, a way of thinking, and in a way that's kind of understandable because if you are out there and you're kind of a scavenger type, like a pigeon or a rat, um, you want to take what you can get now because you're not assured of the future. Uh, you're not assured of the future at all, and so anyhow they continued this on, and and they there was a. Uh, a study that used uh, primates, um, chimpanzees, bonobos, and what they did was they got the primates to understand that you could have two grapes now. Grapes are, you know, very sugary, very sweet, very highly desirable by by animals that eat mainly leaves. Um, you could have two grapes now. But if you were willing to wait 45 minutes, um, you'd get six. And there was a great percentage of these bonobos and chimps that opted to wait. They were willing to wait. They were willing to wait the 45 minutes. Now, they were 
conscious enough or w- able to think through cognitive enough that you know what you know 45 minutes okay uh, I could have two grapes now but you know six grapes wow I'm gonna wait um, and so a great percentage of them did not all but many of them did um, but what they found when humans were faced with something similar and they didn't use grapes they use M&Ms uh, mainly because M&Ms are more desirable for humans than grapes and it's probably not a good optic to be feeding grapes to or feeding M&Ms to chimpanzees neither here nor there um, but 20% less of the humans were willing to wait the 45 minutes for the four extra M&Ms or however it was divvied up uh, which was really kind of interesting because humans for the most part we are we are savers you know I we, we think ahead. We all know we need to retire. We need to have money out there. Now, people might not be saving for it because they're banking on Social Security and they're maybe banking on family taking care of them. But we're at least aware that rainy days or days of scarcity are, are looming. And, you know, it's, uh, if, you, if you were an adult or, you know, reasonably an adult uh, 2008 and saw the financial crash, um you realize that there can be situations where it's moments of scarcity much like people who went through the great depression they they understood great scarcity and the people who grew up during that time my father being one of them um understood and my mother too to a lesser extent but uh, you understood that okay uh, you know it, it's not always you know, it's not always the roaring 20s. It's not always, you know, boom times are not always going to happen. Um, and so you need to need to kind of wait. So we're, we're, we're somewhat aware of that. How we act on that certainly varies from person to person. But in this study, there were a significant number of people who weren't willing to wait the 45 minutes for the four extra pieces of, of M&Ms for, for whatever reason. And I I think I find this interesting and I find it relating to networking just from the standpoint that I see this out there as people kind of play the networking game Um, and they're and you you hear it in what they're asking for and they're willing to play what I call a short game with few opportunities as opposed to playing a longer game with lots of options, lots of opportunities. Let me give you an example. You walk into a room and there's two people in the room. Uh, let's say you're a property casualty insurance agent. Just we'll, we'll make it simple. Um, and there's two people in the room. One person needs needs homeowners insurance. You know they need homeowners insurance. Somehow it's revealed to you that that person needs homeowners insurance. Plain and simple. Um, and the other person is a realtor that doesn't need homeowners insurance but throughout the course of time weeks months quarters years knows lots of people who will need homeowners insurance who do you strike up a conversation with now most people most property casual people would go to the person who needed homeowners insurance bird in the hands worth two in the bush um, and part of the thinking is, you know what, I can always find that realtor and strike up a relationship, but I need to close this business now. And it's kind of that, that was kind of the mindset with respect to the M&Ms. You know what, I'll take two and ms two M&Ms right now. Because I'm comfortable enough knowing that I can find the sixth M&M option any point in time. So I'm going to take what's before me right here and now and not worry about the six M&Ms. I know, you know, I, whereas with the apes, it's like, wow, I may never come across the opportunity to have six grapes. Your, your mindset might be, you know what, I can get six M&Ms at any point. I'll just take the two now and, and be done with this. Um, and likewise, someone's thinking is, the, the property casualty agent's thinking is, I'm going to go to the person who needs homeowner's insurance now. 
And I'll worry about striking up a relationship with the person who can give me lots of policies over time. I'll, I'll, I'll worry about that another time. And I have to be honest, if I were faced with that situation, I would probably choose the same thing. Two people to talk to. Who do you go to? You go to the person who needs, who's the, who's the sale right here, right now. And that's fine. If we change the dynamic of that little hypothetical to, you know what, when you go to talk to one or the other, the other one's going to disappear, that might change the dynamic a little bit. So you're coming in and you're knowing, you know what, I have a choice here. I have a clear choice. I can sell this homeowner's insurance and knowing that that realtor will just disappear from my life and that's the hypothetical, you'll never see them again. Or I can ignore the easy current money, the short, the short game, um, and strike up a relationship with the realtor, knowing that I won't get anything immediately, but down the line, more and more will come to me. Um, and those are, those are the two options. You know, I go talk to this realtor. I'm not going to have a chance to make the sale today. I'm not going to have a sale today. But I might have three or four by the time, you know, the month is over. Or I go ahead and make the sale and that's it. I get the sale and um, I've got to go hunt and gather, find myself another sale. Um, that changes that dynamic a little bit more. And this is just, I don't know if there's a right or a wrong answer to this. This is just something to kind of think about as we get about out there networking. And I hear this in people's commercials. I hear it when they, when they talk about what they're looking for. And a lot of times what they fixate on is they fix on, fixate on what I call the short gain, the short game with few opportunities. In other words, hey, good referral for me is somebody who needs homeowner's insurance here and now. And they're, while they know they would rather rationally rather play the long game, with lots of opportunities. For example, a good referral for me would be an introduction to a realtor that I could have a relationship with that is going to potentially feed me throughout time. People tend to go for the short game. It's just like walking in the room. They're like, in their mind, they're like, I can always play the long game. I can always ask for that relationship, but I want immediate money now. Um, and I, you know, I think it's something that you need to stop and really take a look at your yourself with respect to networking and building relationships and maybe strike a balance between playing the short game with, with limited opportunities, the short game being immediate monies, and playing the long game. The long game being, okay, you know what? I know this isn't immediate money, but I'm investing in the future. I'm stockpiling, I'm stockpiling relationship credit, whatever it is. Um, and you need to kind of strike a balance between those two, because if you're always playing the short game, then it's literally always hand to mouth. You know, you're like the hunter gatherer who is continually chasing, chasing that next meal. You find the meal, you eat the meal and you move on trying to find the next meal and every day is about finding that next meal and that tends to work when things are going well for example recording this it's uh you know fall of 2021 things are going pretty well things are going well in the real estate market things are going well in the mortgage and the title market um, and you're likely going to be playing that short game you know what I need somebody who's going to be just refinancing or purchasing and needing mortgage monies now. Um, that's the short game. And in, mom in times of abundance, you're going to play that short game because it's easy to gather, you know, hand to mouth, right? Gather, eat, go find more, gather, eat. Whereas in times of scarcity, you're more likely to play that long game. Um, and... and to be successful, and there's nothing wrong with that. Again, there's no right or wrong answers here. It's just something to think about as you get out there and network. 
you need to devote some time to playing that long game too. Playing that long game, being like that great ape and just having the patience to say, you know what, I know I'm foregoing some immediate, you know, two grapes right now, but I know my patience is going to lead to more down the line. And it's the same thing with respect to, you know, pick any profession. You know what, I know, I know as an attorney, I could be building a couple extra hours staying back at the office, but I need to go out and I need to go network because that's, that's part of playing the long game. Getting out there, playing the long game, and there's lots of opportunities, long-term opportunities with it, um, but you're going to give up short-term monies as a result. So just something to think about. Um, patience with respect to networking. Certainly patience is always, a, is always important. Um, But sometimes it takes a little bit of discipline to exercise that patience. Sometimes it takes the ability to make that decision where you're going to forego something immediate and look for something a little longer term, bigger things longer term, knowing that you're going to pass up on the immediate. And I think to an extent, people, not everybody, but some people see that. Uh, um, I, I know in been talking with attorneys, fellow attorneys out there, and I even saw it with myself. There was some work I would just pass on. I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in doing that. Um, I would much rather devote my time to try and finding more lucrative things that I wanted to do as opposed to being stuck doing something that I really wasn't passionate about. So just something to think about. Uh, as you get out there and plan your, your networking days, that a little bit of patience, a little bit of playing the long game where there are few short-term opportunities, maybe no short-term opportunities, but lots of longer-term opportunities um, is important. You, don't, all, you can't do it all the time. You can't keep always playing the long game uh, because then you never eat. You do need to play the short game at some point and, and close on business. Um, but there's got to be a, a balance between the two. To wrap up, uh, just to let you, uh, just to remind you, we are looking for people to add to our stable of franchisees. We are, you know, looking for entrepreneurs and professionals that would like to add the Am Spirit Business Connections franchise opportunity uh, as another stream of income to what they're doing. It's great for realtors, um, great for attorneys, great for accountants, great for Mortgage lenders, great for lots of people to add on to what they're already doing. All the franchisees and Amspirit Business Connections do something else, or all the directors, we call them in, in, in Amspirit Business Connections, do something else. They're coaches, they're consultants, they're realtors, um, financial advisors, website designers, telecommunications consultants. It kind of runs the gamut and uh, SEO experts. Um, so for a few hours a day, a couple days a week, they're working the Amspirit Business Connections franchise opportunity. The rest of their time, they are doing what they do. If you're interested or know somebody who's interested, uh, reach out to me using the email in the show notes or the one we leave at the end of this podcast. Thanks for joining us on the Networking Rx podcast. Please put what you've learned into action today and let us know if you have questions, comments, or ideas for future topics. You can email them to us at podcast at amspirit.com. That's A-M-S-P-I-R-I-T dot com. Finally, so you never miss an episode, be sure to subscribe to the Networking Rx podcast through iTunes, Overcast, or however you receive your podcasts. Now get out and network with someone. The Networking Rx podcast is a copyright production of Amspirit Business Connection. All rights reserved.